Hello everyone, this is Jebro and today we're going to talk about the toolkit, so which is going to be the next kit we go through for the engineer. Of course this is a basic guide to what the kit does, what it is, and maybe a couple of tips as well if you should so wish. So what we're going to do is quickly explain generally what the toolkit is about. In a couple of words, not really many, the, the toolkit is very defensive, it's very, it's got a lot of control, it's got defensive utility as well as, you know, using it to cripple your allies and put in vulnerability, put vulnerability on them, put confusion on them, also, you know, blocking attacks um, and also control in terms of the magnet pool which is on the kit as well. So, I'm going to show you on the golem some of these abilities, some of them, you know, that won't be that useful towards the golem, but most of them are. But we're going to start, of course, with the first ability, which is going to be Smack, Whack, then Fwack, which is, uh, I love Fwack, just sounds, you know, it's the final chain, it's the final punch at the end of the chain. It's good. So you can see the first hit, you know, vulnerability, two stacks added, cripple added there as well, second one, then another two stacks with the cripple as well, and then also the cripple on the final hit, but the final hit does a lot more damage, so you can see a nice increase there, but also uh, the thing it does do, which I've never ever done actually in Guild Wars 2, it does heal your turret as well. Now the reason it's in uh, blue and it's 10% is because of course that's been um, augmented by the traits, which I've talked about in the other videos. There's certain traits which you can augment and improve your kits, and I've actually gone into one in this uh, build here as well. So, like I said, you know, I've stuck with the same build, Celestial Holbrook rune there as well. And of course, it makes sense that tools is going to be the line which helps to improve your toolkit. So, this is going to be the major one here Power Wrench, which reduces recharge and improves damage for toolkit skills and enhances turret repairing skills as well, which is what this ability is here. When the whack, smack, whack, and whack. I'm going to get that in the wrong order so many times. But uh, let's just show you what exactly this does to the golem here. One, two, Three. So we've seen the extra vulnerability stacks there being added. Let's just take off the uh, auto attack there. And also you can see the cripple. Useful, but you're not really going to end up walking up to people and smashing them in the face with your with your wrench, of course. And, you know, it's direct damage, so in power builds it's going to be good. But in condition builds it's not going to be that useful because, you know, cripple is just a movement speed effect. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's it's cleavable, you've got three targets, but if you're going to cleave with anything, it's going to be grenades. It's not going to be with a, with a wrench, you know, or a spanner if you're in the UK. So yeah, really, I mean, it's a little bit of extra damage here and there. can do a little bit of pain. You can see how much damage it does there. Not massive amount. I mean, if you crit, you can sometimes get close to 2k, but that's not happening currently. You can see the amount of... Uh, vulnerability hits that are added up onto it as well so you can change it up for something but I wouldn't really use it as a skill which is going to be part of your damage rotation so you know it's just a basic, basic skill I'll stop talking about it now so the also the first ability can repair your turrets now I've never used it like I said but you put the turret down and you kind of just hit it I mean I haven't used it much and I remember using it early on in the game, but now you can repair it because of the augmentation in your traits. You can repair it by 10% instead of just 5%, which is just the base. You just stand there and hit it. Um, I don't think that's changed at all. I've never really tried it out too much, so you go, oh, welcome to try. Um, but it's not really something that anyone actually does, as far as I'm aware, unless you're massively role play. But yeah, let's continue. <laughs> Next skill is going to be a box of nails. So scatter nails that bleed and cripple foes. There we go. We've got some damage with that skill. Really good utility again because we've got the uh, cripple that gets applied and it's there for as long as the nades are. Let's just have, um, sorry, the nails are. You can see it's five targets as well. Radius of 240 and it's a four second as well. So that's going to be four seconds reapplied. Let's just double check that that is the case. You can see it does get reapplied for those four seconds. And the bleeding as well is just the two stacks. So again, not too bad. Good to have if you're also if you're trying to get away as well as pulling out, you know, a little bit of a damage rotation and maybe you're trying to slow down your target. This kit isn't really for PvE, um, it's more, well I guess it can be, 
if you're trying to be a little bit defensive but if you're being very optimum in PvE you're doing a lot more damage and you're probably not going with a toolkit unless it gets buffed in the future for some kind of reason and confusion maybe become, becomes a massive thing for bosses and whatnot or control uh, which could be a thing for raids um, but yeah I mean really it does what it says on the tin it drops a box of nails on the floor which, which cripples and uh, bleeds as well if you stand on nails, that's exactly what happens. Um, right, Pryabra is pretty good. So, Confusion now inflicts damage in Guild Wars 2. It didn't used to. It does now. And it also does damage to the, other, to the opponent when they uh, pop off an ability. And it gives five stacks as well. So, it's not just one stack. It's five stacks. Range is 130, so obviously close quarters. So, let's have a look at the Golem. There you go, five stacks of confusion. And sometimes it can actually do some nice damage, you know. I mean, you can get quite big hits. So, it's pretty useful in terms of, you know, a little bit of extra damage. You can combo it up maybe with a magnet pool, which we'll talk about in a moment. But the extra confusion, five, um, five stack, really, really nice. Especially if you're going up against, you know... A you're quite low HP and the other guy's quite low HP and you just want to pop that confusion on them because they might just end up attacking. Maybe they don't have any condition removal as well and they're going to have to do something or they're going to have to wait out, um, wait it out so they actually can't use any abilities, which is going to be useful for you. Or there's like classes which might do a lot of attacks um, and that's kind of going to screw them over, especially if you're in like a one v one or something. And uh, they might actually do end up doing more damage to themselves than they do to you, especially if they don't notice the stack of confusion. So, again, not bad, a bit of little ability there. And you can see 1.3k, just under 1.4 um, damage there. Of course, the this has been augmented through the power wrench trait line as well, uh, through the power wrench trait, sorry, because it's added damage, obviously. Um, but yeah, you can get more than that, obviously, if you crit good in power builds as well. Gear Shield is going to be the next one. And really, this is one of the main abilities in this, which is so useful. Actually, they're all pretty useful in their own way, other than the first skill. But really, Gear Shield is just awesome. It's a free second block. And it's, you know, really good to make sure you're not going <laughs> to get damaged. I mean, it's just really beautiful. I've used this. This helps you survive so much in PvP. It's got 15 second cooldown. It might not seem like a lot, lot really, uh, like a long period of time that you're blocking, but three second block when you're in a high pressure situation is really, really useful. And I can't really emphasize that anymore, to be honest. I mean, that's that's just really it. Um, you know, it's it can be. There are attacks which can go through blocks, and I'll show you that one in a minute. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's still going to be really, really good versus a lot of abilities that come out from classes. If you're under pressure and you're trying to get out, you know, you can pop that gear shield and pop other defensive utilities as well to combine, to, to kind of chain up to get out of horrible situations, you know, gear shield and then pop an elixir S, which makes you invulnerable to attacks, things like that, which really help your survivability, especially in, the, like, high damage, um, low HP builds as well. If you're going for something like Marauder's Amulet. So, really, really useful skill. Then we've got the Magnet. Now, the Magnet is really, really awesome. Again, this is unblockable. So, if someone has, if you're against another engineer in PvP or World v World, for example, and he puts up a gear shield, you can put up the Magnet and pull him because it's unblockable. Same thing for like a Guardian heal when he's using Shelter, for example, as well. So, anything where there's a block, you can pull out your. Uh, you can pull out your magnet to, inter to interrupt that and interrupting like a, I don't know, like a engineer who's using his block ability to get out of damage when he's low HP can mean a kill. Same with a uh, guardian as well when he's blocking, especially like a DPS guardian because his heal is so important to try and get that block up and the Aegis and everything else that comes along with it. You know, interrupting that ability is pretty massive and just puts so much damage onto the uh, player when he's been pulled in because you can combine it with so many different things depending on what weapon you have, you know. I mean, you can pull him, you can use your pry bar and knock him back with the rifle, you know. That's a lot of CC in one combination of moves. It's great. And with the confusion as well. And at the very least, you're going to cause him to use some kind of maybe dust. stun break as well. Um, there is another little mini trick you can pull out here. Um, as well, I mean, to be honest, 
Really, I mean, you, you can cancel cast things in Guild Wars 2. Not everything, but you can cancel cast a lot of stuff. I mean, with Engineer, for example, you could really duke something, someone out when you can pretend to magnet pull because it's a real big tell, right? So let's let's just pull. You can see, you can see the four or five lines that come out of the magnet, and you can hear it. It's a loud ability. Um, so really, if you don't get that pull off, it's a big cooldown-ish as well. So you want to make sure you're going to be able to use it effectively every single time. So the way to do it is if you if you, they see it or they hear it. It's quite well telegraphed, it's good. Because um, it's a big ability, it should be. If if that happens, you can actually cancel it. So what I do is I, you know, press the five skill, which is the magnet of course, and if they're gonna if they dodge it, then I cancel it by just switching out the weapon. So let's have a look here. There we go. It's just cancelled it. Of course it just has to tick around again to be usable again. But you can see again, let's do that. So I went did the magnet pull and then I just switch. You can switch in the grenade kit, you can weapon swap, you can do whatever you want, you know, to get that outcast. You can't stow your weapon. That's not how it works with kits. You can, because if you see here, now oh, we've got stow weapon, because that's your actual weapon. This is a kit, it's not a stow kit. Um, so, <laughs> right, let's try it again. And again, you know, easy. Just in case they see that and they're able to dodge it. So that's just a good little skill. Also, you can do it to just make people use a dodge up, really, because that makes complete sense and you can really freak people out. So I like it. It's pretty fun. It's, I like to kind of troll people with that sometimes, if I'm honest. But, you know, it's a good effective way of trying to use your paw without even using the paw in uh, PvP because you can force them to dodge, which decreases their survivability. And if you've done it twice, then you know they've got no dodge left. Um, and you're going to be able to get some CC off when you really, really need it, whether or not that's offensively or defensively. Finally, we have Throw Wrench. Adds two stacks of a vulnerability and a cripple. Ignore the Vigor for now as well, because that is through the traits. Vigor is applied to all the traits through the tool line. Um, sorry, through the tool, tool line uh, specialization. Can't speak today. So optimized activation, they using tool belt skills grants Vigor, which is really, really nice for your dodge, of course, which increases this bar. So that's very, very important as well. You can see as well that you know through these traits you can gain a lot of utility for your for yourself and just generally for your tool belt as well as your endurance regeneration, which is important for survival. So this ability it is um, a projectile uh, physical projectile combo finisher as well, which is pretty good. Just try and ignore the missile there coming out because that's through the traits. But there you can see it stacks two stacks of vulnerability and also cripple as well. Now what I'll do in future is I will release a video on projectile finishes for the engineer of course because there's quite a lot to actually go through as you can see. There's the rifle as well and some other abilities where I can show you exactly what I mean about projectile finishes. There'll be one about... Um, Blast combo finishes, which is very important in terms of, you know, bomb kits and also the mortar kit as well. But other than that, really that's about it. Just to double mention as well that another attack that is unblockable is the box of nails, which is very good as well. Because you will definitely get that cripple and that bleeding effect off. Not a massive amount of damage, but the cripple is good and it's five targets and it's also four seconds of cripple. So it's a long time, uh, especially if you are in big trouble. So this has been Jebro. I know it's a short one today with the uh, engineer with the toolkit, but a pretty, imp you know, it's a pretty important kit, especially in PvP. It gets used a lot, and it's good for your defense, very strong for the control and CC factor. Not so used much in PvE, like I said, but World v World and PvP competitive parts, it's pretty strong. So guys, thank you very much. Don't forget to leave comments, subscribe, and uh, follow all the different stuff below. If you've got any extra tips, things that you do with the, the toolkit that can help people out below, or anything you think I haven't mentioned, then please do so below. And I'll see you very soon.